Let's talk about the Tom Curvers prospect showcase. Definitely some highs and lows there, but we got to start with uh, the hat tricks. Uh, first, everyone's losing their shit over Connor Bedard's hat trick. Let, let's hear kind of all angles of it. Like, obviously, looked great, but is this just what he is going to do this year, or is this because he's going up against a, a bunch of prospects? I mean, a lot of it has to do with the fact he's playing against kids either his age or a couple of years older. He's obviously by far the best player on the ice with any of whoever he's playing against at, the, at a showcase like this, any prospect he's going to be by far and away the best player on the ice. But I mean, just the way he stepped in, like it's always interesting when, um, you know, prospects, I'm not even going to say like him because it's, there's probably two uh, <laughs> that had this much like coming in this much like hype or whatever, but high end prospects, like elite number one, overall picks like Larry, let's see how this like first, you know, showcase really goes immediately comes in and showcases that weapon of a shot that he has. It's like, it's the pull, the drag, the power, the flex on the stick. He just immediately does it. Uh, and then can goes on and scores two more ridiculous goals. Hat trick in his first time. He throws on the Blackhawks Jersey in like some kind of, somewhat competitive actually pretty fucking competitive because as i told you before there were like 15 fights uh it was crazy but um immediately scores a hat trick first time he throws on the fucking jersey for a game like if you were wondering why there was so much hype if anyone that hasn't had a chance to watch like not even just like the highlights but just a game of Connor bedard where when he is playing you every time it's just iso cam you are automatically iso camming Connor bedard everywhere he goes um, he, he is fucking unbelievable. And it's really interesting too, to see where the lines are like projected goals for the season. Like they did enough to add a couple decent players up front. Like the fact that he's got Taylor hall, that's going to be a big help for him, obviously. Um, but the fact that he's not like completely on an Island in Chicago this year, mm -hmm. I'm sure is going to help him like boost the stats a little bit. Not that he even really needs tons and tons of help, but like he is fucking unbelievable. And it's just a showcase like that. I'm not shocked that they didn't play him. Of course it was the, like the Minnesota game doesn't play it. Of course, of fucking course he doesn't play it, that one. Um, it's for the best. It was, it was crazy that he was even playing in, in that other game. Like, it was it was so risky that he was... That you he was know they that. didn't want that. There's, I know. They were they're gritting like, the, right, you got your the entire time. Like, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're like, you got your fix. You got your fix. You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. You're done. Okay. 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 Connor, you got, yeah, you got two goals. Please stop. No, no, no. Connor. Connor. Sir. Sir. Connor. Sir. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> You've had your fix. That's enough. That's enough. No, please stop. Uh, he, uh, he is just a fucking alien. I am like, that was the one thing that could have made the Blackhawks interesting and intriguing, like a, an intriguing team to watch this year. So I am actually, unfortunately now going to make myself tune into a whole lot of Blackhawks games. I, cause it, he's obviously got all the hype that like guys like McDavid, Crosby, Matthews, like same kind of hype. But you look at those guys, and it's like Connor McDavid, six foot two, Austin Matthews. What's he six three, six four, like two hundred something pounds? Like he's a fuck. He's fucking huge. I always, which I always forget. Matthews is um, taller than McDavid. Yeah, he's a big motherfucker, dude. He's huge. Right. But then you've got uh, Connor Bedard's like five foot ten, and he is still. Midget. So it's like it's it's still different. Just like the fr like he does look his age. Like he looks tiny. So, um, you know, everyone that tried to find a way early on, it was so funny. Like in, in last year at this time, people were just looking for reasons that it's going to be a challenge him and Fantilli for like first overall. Uh, and I mean, Fantilli, by the way, did his thing at their showcase, fucking five point game the day Babcock got gassed. <laughs> I mean, you know, that's before. what fueled him. <laughs> yeah. He's like, fuck this guy. I'm free. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> But there's just not like there's just no comparing any prospect right now 
it not it's not even remotely close to to the hype of Bedard and how good that kid is. So it's going to be very exciting to see what it looks like in the NHL. But I think he will be fine. So anyone that was wondering how it would go, the first the first showing um, was exactly what we were all expecting. I think so. He's fucking unbelievable, dude. Like it's a joke. The way I just don't understand the power he can get on that release as he pulls the puck in like basically touching his skate blade like he's got it that close and he just rifles it every goddamn time it's unbelievable he is he's insane so oh what, what's the over under for uh goals and points that you'd set i don't know what i i mean i never obviously did it myself but i mean like for me any rookie that's gonna come in and pot 30 you're like holy shit can he at 40 can well it Yes, the interesting okay. thing. Like, can he reasonably like, hit forty? Like, would you be pretty shocked, or would you be like, yeah, I'd be okay. impressed. I think I'd be impressed. Okay, but like, you're like, okay, if anyone had any doubt that this kid could do it, there you go. Like, shove it up your fucking ass. Uh, like, what did Matthews hit forty in his rookie year? God, that seems. I right. think he hit forty, but he had the he had guys like oh, Marner. Marner, Nylander, like Kadri's nasty, like all these other guys around him too that helped. Obviously, it was a good fucking team. They made the playoffs. Dude, he's, got Polino, he's got Tolino. He's got he's got Perry, <laughs> Seth Jones. I, I keep forgetting that they fucking signed Corey Perry too. That's fucking unbelievable. It's such a ragtag. It's the weirdest hockey team. Like if you just look at their I line, I want like, him to play on a line fuck? with Bernard. Like I think that could be fun. Oh, it'd be fun as hell, dude. Um. Oh God! Anyone that touched him, Perry would be like, "I'll probably lose this fight, but I don't care." I'm fucking, <laughs> I'll just fucking karate chop somebody. Uh, oh, but yeah, I mean, I think he is going to step in. I mean, I really hope he has. Actually, wait, I probably don't hope. Is it their their first game against the Bruins, or is that their second game? The Bruins uh, first game. <laughs> I think the opening game of the season is them against Pittsburgh. Okay, good. All right. At least it'll be the second. All right. Well, actually, and then in that case, I'm sorry for this. I hope he steps in and does the Matthews fucking debut. Hat trick. Player of the game. Like, unbelievable. Like, he's so fucking good, dude. dude he's wow. either going to score, like, an Ovech trick, or nice. Latang is just going to end his life. I don't know <laughs> yeah. which. One or the other. Um, <laughs> dude, I just... And so this goes back to when we talked about how I threw money at Crosby to win the heart. Uh, dude, I just like randomly did cause I was bored at work one day. Well, I mean, I was remote, so I was working. Uh, and I had like 20 free minutes where I was like, I don't need to do anything right now. <laughs> Every day, all day, all day. Um, I was like, oh, I kind of want to just see what. So I went on ESPN. I did like a fantasy draft. Just to kind of see like what people are thinking. Uh, I got Sidney Crosby in the third fucking round. Like Bedard went 20 spots before him. I was like, are people fucking out of their goddamn mind? Like, yep. It's unbelievable. So maybe uh, maybe there aren't a whole lot of people who have like even the smallest amount of doubt that Bedard's going to step in immediately and light it up. Um, I wish I couldn't. I could not. I was sitting like, are What's happening right now? Does Crosby have some like major injury I'm not aware of? Like I don't understand. Um, yeah. So that's where that's I guess that's what people are thinking, or just the people who do a uh, ESPN fantasy draft like noon on a weekday. I don't know. <laughs> so that could, that could have something to do with it. What what an oxymoron though. Uh, an ESPN fantasy hockey draft. Yahoo takes too long. <laughs> Fair enough. I didn't Fair have the enough. time. I didn't have the time to do the Yahoo one. All right. Um, but yeah, we can move on. Yeah. Well, speaking of hat tricks, Sammy Walker looking okay. Yeah. I mean, again, it's crazy. Like, I was very curious to see what, how his AHL season would go once they uh, once they got him from Tampa. Um, and obviously, we saw immediately stepped in, lit it up in the AHL. Like, showcasing even more like offensive skill set that he did at Minnesota. Part of that has to do with the fact that Minnesota's got 
every year they've got kids that are going top 10 to draft, like elite high end offensive players. And like Sammy Walker was the kind of like the ultimate complimentary hockey player there. I feel like, like pretty much just do whatever you need to do. He can chip in some offense, but he wasn't like a go-to guy, obviously for them. Um, and immediately like again, just showcasing skills that I have not seen him like showcase while he was in college and he was doing it every game. And then he's the few games he played in the NHL fit right in and like didn't change his game whatsoever. And I gained, Again, he steps into these showcase these showcase games and lights it up. Another hat trick for him as well. Um, and I just am really curious to see like where this goes for him because again, like now that finally we'll touch on this, Addison finally signed. Um, but who knows how many call ups they can even afford this year? <laughs> but like Sammy Walker with where he's at with his age and everything, this is about the time that you want to be like stepping in the NHL and he's shown that he can be an NHL player. Obviously he's been there pretty much at this point, their go-to call up last year, like when they were you know, looking for anybody to come in and chip in, but um, like he's good enough to play. Like he can play in the NHL for sure. It's just like Minnesota has the craziest weird, like log jam in terms of like money and <laughs> like the roster makeup and everything like that. So it's, it's crazy because it, Minnesota ended up being the perfect spot for him last year to step in and produce in the AHL and like, be surrounded by players that would help him as well. But in terms of like an NHL future with where he's at with his age, it's just like, it feels like that's a bit conflicting almost, but um, I mean, it's not like he's like 30 years old, but he's just older than most kids that you'd call prospects, of course, but sure. He was phenomenal. Like every shift, like doing it at both ends of the ice too, obviously producing points, but like, you notice him defensively. He's physical. He plays hard. Like he's just a really smart hockey player. So, um, yet another guy that like we've seen over the past few years, like with Iowa, though, like they've got a whole lot of guys I feel like that have come up and like chipped in and been solid players, like in a middle six role or a bottom six role. Like they can play. It's just there's just always been this fucking like log jam of players. And now you've got like the, the cap situation. So, Interesting. Well, it'll be interesting to see how many games he gets this year because I'm sure they'll they'll finagle away with this cap because they always do. Every team always does, but um, they're just in that precarious spot where they've got 40 grand in space. Uh, they can't really afford a call at this point, which is fucking crazy to me. It's really funny. It's wow. a very funny thing to me. It's just like we can't call anyone up. It's unfortunate, but it sucks. Um, but he looked fucking great. A couple guys. He was one of a few guys from Minnesota specifically that stood out. Well, dude, he's actually, gonna look. He's gonna look even bigger now that he took uh, number eighteen for his jersey. That's right. That's right, baby. That's right. Um, let me see. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll open it up to you here. Like, who else from the tournament like stood out to you? Like anyone else that's worth discussing? Well, two guys. Well, I, there there are a couple for sure. But um, even before like two like before like the standout guys, two guys I was uh, surprised and very happy to see. Number one, Pavel Novak played, and it was so fucking good to see him play again, dude. Like I was because I knew he was like healthy again, but then got hurt, so I wasn't sure if he was gonna be playing again. I didn't, as I've told you before, I have not in the off season. I just don't pay attention to what's going on. Um, so like. The second he stepped on the ice, I was like, fuck, that's fucking awesome. Just like that's cr like the amount of resilience that takes and like just mental fortitude to have to step away if, literally because you have cancer, then come back and play again. It's good for him. Very happy to see him. And then another guy that I was not sure if he was going to be healthy, Kyle Masters played and he looked incredible. He had a couple of assists in those games. Uh, it's just that injury that he had, like the way he went flying into the boards looked like i was like oh boy like they said it was already right there like a couple months i was like that could really fuck him up especially when one of the hallmarks of his game is skating um he looks just as good as he did before uh super fucking mobile incredibly physical too he was getting in the mix every time he had a chance to um but the puck moving and like just the overall willingness to get involved in the offense like we've talked about before what he was when he was in red deer when they were completely restricting his game like not letting him do what kyle masters like excels at 
Um, you know, he goes to Cam Loops, gets the opportunity to jump up in the offense and just have the puck and like be fully free. Um, it looks like that's going to translate just to how he approaches the game at the next level as well. So that's very exciting to see. Um, and Iowa's going to have a bunch of young players now. Like they do convert, like they actually have all the young players that we every year were like, oh, this team's be really fun. And then you find out they sign like eight guys to HL deals. Everyone else goes back to fucking juniors. But now you're going to have guys like Masters, Bank here, Lambos, uh, Simon Johansson, Damon Hunt, like all those guys, Ryan O'Rourke, all of them. Like there's going to be a bunch of young players on that team with legit ceiling. So that's going to be very exciting. It'll be, it makes it significantly harder to play because uh, the AHL is a very old league, obviously, and it's fucking a tough league to play in for a young player. But um, the fact that they will have a bunch of young guys there is going to be so fun, very fun to watch. But um, but those were two guys specifically I was very happy to see just like health-wise, specifically Pavel Novak fucking fired up that he's uh, back to play it again. Because, um, I mean, God damn it, that last year before he got sick, he lit up the WHL on a very average hockey team. So, um, but those are two guys specifically I just wanted to mention. Obviously, Sammy Walker did his thing. And I'm telling you, man, Rasmus Kumpelainen is so fun. Like, he's massive and not the – it's interesting because I said this before. Like, it's tough to say – like, he's not the best skater in the world, but he makes it work because he's so incredibly, A, skilled, but B, like, shifty. Where, like, he knows he doesn't have that, like, burning speed. But, like, he can just somehow, from a standstill, like, deke you out and create, like, three feet of separation for himself. And he did it a few times where it was, like, high risk. Like, he had two guys on him at his, at the offensive blue line where if they stripped him of the puck, like, it was a 2 on zero for sure. And every time he looks like he's just like dead to rights, going to like cough up the puck. And he just gets through whoever it is every time drives to the net, draws penalties. Like, and he obviously is not afraid of the physical side of the game. So, you know, he's got all the skill in the world. He's very fun. He's very flashy with the puck, but he also has a mean streak in front of the net too. So he makes himself quite a versatile offensive player. Um, But I thought he made a ton of plays with the puck that, that stood out quite often so he's he's really fun again i said this when they after the draft like sneaky the most intriguing pick was that kumpa line and just because he's got those foundational like traits and skills that make him ultimately successful at like the nhl level it's yeah. just there's a few major roadblocks he's gonna have to get over like the skating part and he's gonna have to make himself quite useful defensively but um yeah, kind of important um yeah okay, but well, just well, so well, fun to watch though Fair. The one I got to ask about is the the twins, height and hate. What do we see there? I think I do. I literally have to like actually now that I'm, when you bring them both up, you actually have to slow down. I'm like <laughs> uh, Hunter hate. Okay, dude. I I would assume he's gonna be back in Saginaw. He is going to eviscerate the OHL. Like he looked so goddamn good like the skating the skill the smart play like and again he's one of those guys that like maybe in zone defensively is is, like that's where he runs into trouble but he he's as a forward he's able to kill so many plays in transition just because he's such a good skater he's so good with his stick too that he makes himself useful and can just eliminate a whole lot of like offense for the opposition before it even like starts um, you know, as they're breaking up the ice, or whatever, but he looked dynamic offensively, making so many plays. And I gotta tell you, that first game, he got involved. He, this poor fucking kid, <laughs> he like got involved in some like scrap in front of the net. And of course, the dude, I can't even say his name, I don't know how to say his name on St. Louis, just decided, no, I'm gonna fucking fight Hunter Hate. The kid's like 23, like fighting in the AHL. And just started going to town. And Hunter Hate didn't even have his fucking like gloves off. And he's just getting like just getting a beating. And then he started throwing some back. I was like, holy shit, all right. He's standing in there. And then he caught one uppercut and like his legs went. I was like, oh no, please, God, please do not tell me. 
this kid just got knocked the fuck out, concussion out for a couple. Like it was bad, but he popped right back up, served it. Somehow got a five minute major for fighting, technically for getting beat up. First shift back goal. I was just like, "That's thank God he's all right. first of all, thank God he's fine." Like I mean, dude, I could like hear the punch through the teeth. I was it was brutal. I was like, "Oh no, <laughs> that's it." There goes there goes a couple months. That's a conk. Um, but he came back, scored, and then he lit it up the second game too. So he looked so good. And then Riley Height. There we go. Nice. Also, again, everything that like everything about his game that made him to a lot of us a for sure first round pick, you saw in the showcase. So much skill. He's obviously he can score goals. He's got a phenomenal shot, great release. But his playmaking is dynamic, man. Like, just sees plays that you have no idea even there. He's another one of those kids that just th thinks three plays ahead. He creates passing lanes and, and finds a seam for himself. But, um, and that's another kid that loves loves the chippy shit. So um, he looked he looked great too. But um, it was weird, dude, because like the say I looked at that. We talked about it last week. I looked at the the roster St. Louis is bringing, and I was just like, man, there's a couple guys that are like good players, but a bunch of guys that are like maybe like older, like looking for a potential deal somewhere. And they beat the piss out of Minnesota, like physically on the scoreboard. It was like a bloodbath. I was just like, this is brutal. Um, and then they played fairly well against Chicago. I actually watched like two periods of the, the blues in Chicago game. I couldn't, I don't know. Couldn't tell you how they did, but uh, they looked great. Part of that, I feel like, has to do with the fact that they did bring like a an older group and a bunch of guys that probably should have got drafted before. Um, like I said, the uh, the Austrian kid or the Swiss kid, um, Biaska. I can't remember how to say his name, but um, they I mean, again they they beat up Minnesota, which I was very surprised about. Um, but yeah, no, again, overall just super fun. I love those showcases. It, it, as I was saying before, dude super physical like i beat specifically the uh chicago and minnesota too that game got nasty like every goddamn whistle there was like scrums ryan o'rourke stood in there and fought nolan allen who is a giant mean mutant and did fairly well ate a couple bombs but stood in there and, and that he fought i think who was i think it might have been Hunter hate that got crushed at the blue line. He stepped in and fought Nolan Allen. Um, it's just crazy. It's just like, which again, I cannot believe the Blackhawks even let the dart play in one of these games because it just gets so nasty immediately. Um, but again, just an overall super fun, like tournament showcase to watch just seeing like the young talent versus other young talent. And like, um, no, it's always entertaining, especially with some of the guys you don't really hear a whole lot about. And especially the guys who aren't necessarily signed to any deals or um, maybe they didn't get drafted, you know, seeing what they can do to like make themselves stand out. So, um, no, overall fun showcase to watch for sure.